What's going on guys, Kaiser here from Kaiser Reveal, and today we'll be taking a look at a $99 smartphone gimbal by Fayetech. Now Fayetech did send this out to me for review, but as always, I'll be giving you guys my unbiased opinion. With that said, let's get to it. Inside the box you get this really cool carrying case. Now this is one of the things that I wanted in the previous model so it's good to see that they included it this time around. You also get this cool mesh pocket for storage. Inside here you'll find a user manual, a warranty card, and a micro USB charging cable. Here's a closer look at how this device is stored. You also get a wrist strap, a tripod, and the Vimbo 2 gimbal. Now this device is made of plastic but it doesn't feel cheap, it actually feels pretty good in hand. On the bottom you have a standard quarter 20 mount for your tripod. This is how the device looks mounted. Up top you have your phone mount. Now this mount can be rotated 360 degrees for landscape or portrait use and it supports phones from 57 to 84 millimeters in width. Just below that you have a micro USB for charging your mobile device. Now this can definitely come in handy but it will reduce the 5 hour battery life of this device. Underneath that you have a cross arm and this is used to balance the device. On the front you have a status indicator, a joystick, a function button, and a bluetooth shutter release button. On the side you have a focus button. Now this doesn't pull focus, it actually acts as a zoom. On the rear you have a trigger button that when tapped will reset the gimbal back to the default position or if held will lock the gimbal in the current position. And on the other side you have a micro USB for charging the device. Now the charging time is about 2 hours and this will get you about 5 hours of operation time. This device also features a telescoping arm that can be extended from 0 to 183 millimeters. Now this could come in handy if you're taking selfies or if you need to capture some low level footage. There's also an app included. Now you don't have to use the app but in order to use the shutter button and some of the in app features you'll need it. Alright so to get started I'll be using my Samsung S8. Now Fayetech does recommend removing your phone case before setting this up. First you'll want to balance the device. Now this is really easy. This is how the device looks unbalanced. Now to get this balance you'll want to either extend or retract the cross arm. And that's it. From here you'll want to long press the power button and you're good to go. The joystick allows you to pan the device left or right and tilt up and down. By default the device will be in pan mode and this is represented with one flashing light. To lock the device in its current position simply press and hold the trigger. Double tapping the trigger will reset the device back to the default position. A single tap on the function button will place the device in lock mode. And pressing the button once more will unlock the device. Pressing the function button twice will place the device in follow mode. Pressing the function button three times will switch cameras. Now this will only work when using the app. Pressing the function button four times will place the device in motion control mode. From here you can automate moves by first placing the device in the end position then pressing the function button to set the position, then placing the device in the start position, and pressing the function button once more to start the move. Now you can increase or decrease the speed of the automation by changing the pan and tilt speed inside the app. Pressing the function button 5 times will place the device in initialization mode. Now the focus button is used to zoom in and out, but as you can see here, the footage is pretty jerky and unusable. Additional features inside the app include scenes, exposure, white balance and ISO control. Inside the settings menu is where you'll find a ton of gimbal and camera features such as controlling the speed of your heading, tilting, panning, rolling, rocker settings, calibrations and a ton of other customizable functions. This app also features face tracking which works pretty well. In addition to that you can also track objects. To do this simply draw a box around the object. Now I'm thinking that the app uses edge detection to accomplish this because the box doesn't fully surround the object, it actually highlights the edge instead and because of this it's not always accurate. Now this is just one of the several problems that I had with the app. I also found that getting the gimbal connected was pretty inconsistent. The app would actually see the device but for some reason it just wouldn't connect. Another problem that I have with the app is that you can't shoot in 4K. 
So because the app seemed pretty inconsistent, I wanted to verify this by pulling the footage and loading it into Premiere. But this led to an even bigger problem. I couldn't export the footage. Now I was able to contact the rep who directed me to a video explaining that I needed to download some software from the site. However, after doing all of this, I was still unable to export the footage. So to make a long story short, as of today, I'm still unable to export any footage shot using the app. Alright, so here's some footage that I shot directly from my phone using the gimbal. Now I accidentally forgot to manually set the exposure, so any flickering that you see is because it's set to auto. Here's a shot of me running with the gimbal. Now like every other gimbal that I've used, you're going to get some bobbing up and down depending on your form. But just like the previous gimbal that I reviewed by Fairtech, the SPGC, it actually does a good job when it comes to that. But what surprised me is that this gimbal now has problem with side to side motion. If you look at this footage, you can actually see more horizontal movement than vertical. Also because of this, it seems like the gimbal realizes that it's swaying too much to a particular direction, so it does this hard pan to realign itself, which leads to this quick jerking motion. Now you do have the option to adjust the panning speed and strength in the app, but I'm not certain that this is going to solve the jerking issue. But because there's issues exporting footage shot in app, you currently don't have that option. Alright, so now onto my opinion of this gimbal. Now I'm not certain what development changes were made or sacrificed from the time that the SBGC was created or why Fayetech decided to go with a totally different app, but the SBGC is a much better gimbal in my opinion. The problems with the app alone almost makes this device unusable. Now me personally, I never use apps with my gimbals because the default settings are usually good enough. But because you're going to need the app to tweak the settings, you're almost forced to use it. Now this is considering that they fix the problems when exporting footage. And even then, you're going to be limited to 1080p. So as of right now, until Fayetech fixes the issues with the app, it's hard to recommend this device even at 99 bucks. Now I plan on comparing the Vimbo 2 and the SBGC anyway, so what I'll probably do is wait a little while and see what updates are made for the Vimbo 2. But anyway, I'm curious to know what you guys think, so leave a comment below. And I'll leave a link in the description just in case you guys want to check this device out. And as always, if you guys enjoy this content, be sure to hit that like button and definitely subscribe. So until next time, peace.